how you doing this is brother t if you want to support the channel we have t-shirts and other merch right there in the description just hit the link you were a star child let your light shine for all the world when you open your mouth to reveal a pearl let it shine more just to light the path if it don't add up man just do the math if it ain't for you let it pass on through how you doing? This is Terrion Wilson, aka Yo Boy, Brother T, here with another one. So, we like to call this channel T's Life Tree. And on this channel, we like to give you little pine cones of wisdom. If you don't know what that is, stick around, stay on the channel, you'll get it. Before we get started, I need you to like, I need you to subscribe. Because when you like and subscribe, we can continue to give you those pine cones of wisdom. Okay, so today we're going to talk about why being a free thinker is so darn dangerous. <laughs> Woo! All right, so, and I, I did that on purpose. Because being a free thinker, you are first line. You, you, you get attacked a lot when you're a free thinker. And then from all sides. We're not just talking about from a grand system, all right, that's against you. We're not just talking about just the direct opposition. Sometimes you'll get attacked by the people around you who call themselves family and friends. So being so what is being a free thinker? This is when nobody, nobody can tell you how to think about anything. You are more open minded to things. Now, if you walk down the street and you ask 10 people, are they free thinkers out of those 10 people? Eight of them are going to say yes, but the eight of them are probably or seven of them going to be wrong, right? <laughs> you're going to get one or two free thinkers out of every 10 people you speak to now what is a free thinker they don't go with the crowd they don't necessarily go there they question everything they question everything they see question everything they hear okay this is not a bad thing necessarily free thinkers sometimes if they're powerful enough or if they're in a, a specific position they can absolutely 100 percent change the world and they have before just think about the people who you've seen that have come, come with uh, certain ways to look at life, cer certain ideals, certain worldviews that just weren't popular at the time, but it ended up being exactly that. I'll give an example. Our sister, Francis Chris Welsing, and our brother, Neely Fuller Jr., who's still with us. Francis Chris Welsing is no longer with us. She made that transition. Now, both of them uh, from the 1960s or 70s up until present day, they were a part of that movement that hammered home the idea of white supremacy, what it means, what it means in your life, why it exists, uh, what, what are the effects to African-Americans, people that look like me. And people, they weren't trying to hear that. Even their own people, <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm telling you, they got fought all the way. It's up until recent years, even a few years ago, people would fight you on white supremacy. Does it really exist? How deep it is? Why do you always have to talk about it? And then I, I, I had their books, of course. So I would bring it up to people and then I would hear it from people in my family. Why you always gotta bring that up? Why is this and why is that? I'm talking, no, it's a real system. It's really, it's affecting our lives. And I'm not saying uh, it shouldn't keep you from doing what you need to do in your life. It shouldn't stop you and hold you from becoming the, the, the person you're supposed to be. You're supposed to be on your purpose no matter what, but you still have to be aware of what's going on. And I would get argued with and I would get flack. And I'm telling you, and, and those were free thinkers and they had it. And I'm a free thinker and I had it all around me. Fast forward, here's CNN and CSNBC in recent, like the last year or so, now they're saying it on TV, but they're applying it the wrong way. We'll talk about that later. But they're saying it on TV now. Now all the people around me that told me, why, why, why'd you always bring it up? Why you always wanna talk about that? Now they wanna talk about it because it's on CNN and MSNBC. A sheer sign of not being a free thinker, right? For those that want to know what a free thinker is, I just told you. So if you fall out of that category and you don't necessarily follow what the media tells you and what, what's thrown in your face, if you question it, you're a free thinker, right? Even if, you, let's say you can be religious, you can be a Christian, you can be whatever religion you're into. If you go there and you, you hear the preacher preach and you question naturally some of what they say, you can still be a, a religious, but you're a free thinker. You're not just gonna take it just because somebody said it. Show me what you're talking about. What are you talking about? 
doesn't make sense. <laughs> then does it work for me? You get what I'm saying? Those are the things that free thinkers do on a regular basis. This is everyday life. Now, sometimes it's hard being your man, brother T, because I am a free thinker, which means I piss a lot of people off. I trigger people all the time just by being me and just by having an opinion. The fact that I don't go with the crowd triggers some people because they're so used to running with the crowd. They're so programmed to believe what the crowd is believing that when somebody brings something that that um, is counter to what they know or believe in, that triggers something in them. We call this cognitive dissonance. Whenever you take information and it disagrees with what you what you've been believe in the whole time and what you hold to then you can have that cognitive dissonance and it'll give you a problem mentally even so where you'll shut down the whole conversation just because you hear something that counteracts what you believe right now your brent man brother t no matter what i believe and how i believe it i do have the patience where i can listen to another person's opinion and i won't feel any kind of way about them having their opinion now it that required work over the years and it, the more i became uh more open and free in my thinking the more i understood that we all are human beings and we all have a point of view and a perception of the world which means there's no such thing as a good side and a bad side to a lot of things it's just a way of looking at it a lot of people who call themselves lifelong Democrats, they think the Republicans are the enemy. And then people are that are lifelong Republicans thinks the Democrats are the enemies. This is ludicrous. They're on the same side. We call that the Hegelian dialectic. So what's a Hegelian dialectic? It's when both sides are actually the same. They're just a They're just they're just appearing to be different there's actually small things that they disagree on but for the most part they want the same thing now the problem is is that people have bought into the um the hype the media hype and all types of other hype and so they buy into it and so i think the republicans are the ones that are tearing up the country and then the Republicans think Democrats are tearing up the country when in fact we all are tearing up the country just because we're not working together. <laughs> That's what I mean. And that is the mind of a free thinker that can tell you sit in the room and say, no, they're not the bad side and you're not the good side and you're not the bad side. and They're not the good side. All of you are in error. That's what the free thinker does. Now, I went through all that tangent just to get to the things that make you a free thinker. All right. <laughs> and the tangent was definitely needed, though, because people don't understand the, the things that free thinkers go through. We go through a lot. We can't even have people. We can't even be married to a person that's not a free thinker when, when we're a free thinker without going through a lot of trouble. All <laughs> right. And getting accused of a lot of things and uh, looked at and, and, you know, hissed at and all kinds of stuff. So what are some of the things that come with being a free thinker? Well, it's going to seem that they all going to hate you. And I just covered this, right? So it's going to, I mean, it's going to seem like everybody just hates you because you're not going with the status quo. And if you're not going with the status quo, then you're not involved in their group thing. And if you're not involved with the group thing, then you're not trying to do what's good, what's right in their opinion. <laughs> That's going to happen to you. I gave you the example of Francis Cress Welsing, and I gave you the example of Neely Fuller Jr., who are freedom fighters, and they fought for people of color to have, or uh, specifically African Americans, to have equal rights in this society and to crumble what we call the system of white supremacy. All right, cool. All right, so what, what else happens? Well, they'll tell you you're crazy then change up when the news reports it. I just gave you an example of that earlier with CNN, right? When I was talking about white supremacy 10 years ago, people were arguing me down like it didn't exist. And now they saw on the news, you know, uh, you know, African-American male after African-American male gets shot down by the police. And now there's protests and now you're hearing CNN report it. And now it's OK to say the word <laughs> classic case of just following the crowd. If you were real with it and you were really looking at it, you would have looked at what I was saying 10 years ago. 
all right? And I'm not sitting here like I'm all bitter and mad about it. I'm not bent out of shape, but I just, it's, it's just sometimes it can be frustrating just being the free thinker and being the one person out the group that separates itself from the group just because you see it in a different way. And then you'll get ostracized and then they look back and then you, or you look back and you see, oh, now y'all agree with it. Okay, whatever. All right, so let's go. What else comes with it? You are a threat to any establishment. Now, I talked about uh, white supremacy today, but this is any establishment. This could be communism, right? Or anything with, with that's, that's established that puts oppression on the people. All right? Whenever you think outside of that, you become a threat. Especially if you start galvanizing people and getting people to listen to you and God forbid you get people to move with you like a Dr. King and somebody on that level or, or Malcolm where you can get people to actually follow you. Oh my God. And you're a free thinker. Forget about it. Forget about it. <laughs> All right. So what else comes with that? At times you'll be on an island. You, be used to not being with the crowd when you like that, unless you're gonna suppress your free thinking, right? But if you're out front and you're open with it, you are going to be on an island, sometimes all by yourself. If you're lucky enough to find a mate or a person to be in a relationship with, who you can click and vibe with, and both of you can express yourself openly and freely, then God bless you. Stay with that person, keep them around you because it's hard to find free thinkers when you're a free thinker. All right, so what else comes with it? People avoid conversations because of cognitive dissonance. Now, if you were listening closely earlier, we talked about cognitive dissonance, and that's when you believe something your whole, maybe sometimes your whole life, and then some, some information comes in that seems viable that counteracts what you believe. Sometimes automatically, even subconsciously, your body has shut that off. You won't want to have that conversation because it sounds uh, too crazy, right? I'll give you a perfect example and I'm going to trigger some folks. So be ready for it. When you watch my channel, this, I should rename it from tease life tea to tease triggering tree. Okay. Cause that's all I do on this channel. And I do it on purpose because I want you to get better and there's no way to get better. Not really not taking care of those past childhood traumas. You can't heal that stuff unless you're triggered, in my opinion. If you go around and you go the rest of your life sweeping stuff under the rug and acting like it's not there, there's no way to deal with it. So one of my purposes on this earth is to talk to you, trigger you, get you to that healing, and you'll thank me later. No, so let's go to cognitive dissonance. A perfect example is when you catch somebody that is religious, super religious. Now, when you start to, if you've looked into the, the beginning of, uh, that said religion, especially how it starts the origins and you've really done the study and they have not and you come to them with real like, oh, so what about this? I did this um, research and, and I found this and that in, and they haven't done it. Cognitive dissonance right away. They don't want to hear what you got to say. They got to get out of there. Now, some of you know what I'm talking about. Some of you do it and I don't I'm not mad at you for doing it. All I'm saying is, if you become a free thinker, if you're, if you're one of those people and you're becoming a free thinker, just know that those scenarios are going to happen to you. I'm talking to the free thinkers today. I'm getting you prepared for what's going on, what's going to come to you. All right. So let's review them again. So you, they're going to hate you. It's going to seem like they all hate you. All right. Then they're going to tell you you're crazy and then they're going to change up when the news reports it. They're also, you're also going to become a threat to any establishment. At times you're going to feel like you're on an island. And last but not least, people are going to avoid conversations because of cognitive dissonance. So this has been your man, brother T, and I'm going to do a whole episode on cognitive dissonance. Don't worry about it. It's going to be awesome too. I'm going to get out of here and I'm going to see you on the next episode. Uh, family, I gotta go. So peace. Thanks for stopping through.